Hello and welcome to Long COVID Foundation podcast. In the past year, we discussed a lot about COVID and long COVID, symptoms, treatments, therapies, and I realized that I somehow missed to cover a very important topic, pregnancy and pregnant women. So this interview is to all who are waiting for your little ones, to dads who look forward to meet their babies and learn on various delivery options and services around you. So if you are in this group, please watch this talk from start to finish, because we will help you to learn more. And just very quickly, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I can then help you to get answers relevant to you. And don't forget to give a video a like because this tells me that these videos are useful. And at the same time, it motivates me to create more content for you. Thank you very much. And let's jump straight into our interview. So hello and welcome to Long COVID Foundation podcast. And it's my pleasure to introduce you Nikita Stark, who is a natural birth practitioner affected by the pandemic. So private sector midwives have been forced to stop working during the pandemic after they all lost the insurance as the work deemed to be very risky. Experts in their field lost their jobs purely because of commercial insurance market. So the result of that is hundreds of midwives who lost their job Plus, this had significant impact for a lot of women, as many trusts have removed the option for home birth. So, Nikita, welcome to our podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Could you please share your story and where did you start and how you became a natural birth practitioner? I'll try and wrap this story up as quickly as possible. But uh, it started when I was uh, 21. So... 13 years ago I had my first baby and it was horrific it was just the most awful experience and I went through like a conveyor belt system I had no idea I could decline intervention they said you've got to be induced you're overdue and I thought okay you know man in white coat says so and I just complied and I shouldn't have because it was just the most traumatic time afterwards I thought to myself I can see what I've just been through is common but I can feel it's not normal so I started to do some research and I started my journey in midwifery but I left because I didn't like it it didn't sit well with me I felt that midwifery had been pathologized instead of centered around normal birth it was more and more about medical intervention and ticking boxes and paperwork rather than being with women it's with system not with women um so I thought that's not right so then I thought how can I serve people with my ability um which was a deep-rooted love of of um physiological birth so I attended a doula training course and then I loved it and I thought right this is what I'm meant to be doing so I've been doing this for 12 years nearly 13 and along the way, I've been working with some amazing independent midwives. Um, by the way, private and independent midwives are kind of different. So private midwives are a company. They still have insurance. Um, and independent midwives are self-employed and they have no insurance because insurance companies based their liability risk on obstetric practice in general instead of midwives, which is ludicrous. But hey, this is where we are. And I'm, I'm, I've been trying to sort this out for the last year, getting somewhere slowly. After I, I had my second baby during lockdown last year. And I tried to go, I'll be careful with my wording here. I tried to go with the mainstream care option. And it was not very good. And I experienced what women have been talking to me about for years. Coercion, bullying scaremongering telling me that my baby's going to get stuck my baby well first of all they said oh your baby's breech so you have to have a c-section I went well that's rubbish I said I've attended breech births it's just a variation of normal I'm still having my baby at home and I'm not confusing my body's ability with yours so um provide me with a midwife that's competent in breech birth to which they replied they don't have it 
Anyway, my baby wasn't breached at all. She was in the compound presentation, which means like her hand was there. And but they they probably would have freaked out about that if they'd known. But I, they didn't come to my birth. So I had a, a liberating time actually. It was very empowering, and it healed me from my first experience. So after I had my baby, I thought that's how you you meant to do it. And I'd seen so many births like that before. I've supported so like countless births like that, and. I suppose there was a part of me when I was pregnant that was still a little bit indoctrinated and I thought, oh, maybe I can't do this. And then I listened to my body and I thought, oh, of course I can. And that was easy. It was. It wasn't even painful. It was a pain-free birth. It was just intense. And it took three hours. Women are being coerced left, right and centre. And especially because of the pandemic, they were removing home birth options, which made no sense considering... The average home birth rate at any given trust is about 2%. I don't see how that's a problem for staff. Like not many people are going to be running to home births, you know, and it makes more sense to do home births. I mean, statistically, it's safer, even for high risk women. If you go to Sarah Wickham's website, there's so much information on high risk and home birth. You know, my C-section rate is really small compared to the mainstream. And I've been doing this a very long time. And only about 5% of my clients end up having to transfer into hospital. So talking about the uh, C-section, um, so what are the risks uh, for women and uh, their babies, long-term effects? Why the rate of C-section is very high under NHS? What has changed? I think it's a multifaceted answer, to be honest. The things that first come to mind are the over-medicalization of birth. Now, when they started doing cesarean sections, they used to be used just as they should be for an emergency. And according to the World Health Organization, they even say that any given hospital, if the C-section rate exceeds 10%, there's no better outcome for mum or baby. So that's, that's very telling. The thing is, C-sections have actually become safer. I'm talking about uh, the competence of the surgeon, the surgeons doing it. They know, they can do it faster. They used to do a vertical incision to get the babies out. Now it's obviously horizontal, which is above your bikini line. So it's less dangerous. So I think there's been a full sense of security that it's a, it's a safe alternative rather than an option if absolutely necessary. The other problem is, most mothers really don't have informed consent because when you go through the system, this convey about system, they do not tell you about the risks involved during a C-section. They will give you, you know, the, the standard like sign here, blah, 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 but they don't go into a lot of detail. And it's usually scaremongering that ends up with women choosing to go down that path or previous bad experiences. And they end up with tocophobia, which is fear of giving birth. But the risks, the real risks that really should be spoken about you've got the standard you know they might nick you or cut your bladder or something like that or infection and then there could be a problem with the epidural but apart from that women need to know about the human microbiome so if your baby is born by cesarean section you know they're not they're not going to get the seeding that they would in a vaginal birth of the microbiome to start their they, you know, their gut bacteria doing its thing. So that's why it's so important to have skin to skin contact if you really do need a cesarean section, because C-section babies are far more likely to have allergies, eczema, asthma, and, and they're, they have leaky gut. This can all be rectified with diet later on in life, by the way, so it's not the end of the world. But I think women probably make a different decision if they had that information going forward and if they had the bigger picture if you've got someone telling you you've got to do this because your baby's going to die of course you're going to go oh my god yeah but you know that you need to understand what they're telling you they're guidelines they're not law and their guidelines are probably around the nine percent mark of evidence base because obstetrics is the lowest evidence-based um medical practice there is according to the Cochrane review so that's horrific. So if you're being told, for example, you have to have a C-section because you have a breech baby, okay, what's the evidence? They won't be able to provide you with any evidence because the initial study, the I think it was called the HANA study, they revoked that because they realised that there is a, the same mortality um, risk for babies, whether they're um, if they're breech, 
either born by C-section or vaginally. Also, they looked at the, the people performing um, or helping them with the vaginal birth and the surgeons who were making women give birth on their back and doing a hands-on approach to breech birth, they're more likely to die. The hands-off understanding physiological breech birth, that's a different story altogether. So you need the full picture. And when doctors and midwives say to women, well, your, your risk of, I don't know, stillbirth doubles. Okay, doubles of what? Is it one in 500 to two in 500? Because that's very different from one in five to two in five. So you need accurate data yeah, to make an think, decision. Um, you're covering very important points because I think there is very little information given to women during their pregnancy, even though they have very a limited number of times they can visit midwives during their pregnancy. They only see them commonly closer to the end of their pregnancy. And uh, during this time, they're left to deal with anything alone mm -hmm. and uh, I think the information that you try to share and communicate among pregnant women is very important very important to learn at the first month of pregnancy so the pregnancy is smooth and they're more informed and they can make more informed decisions when time comes so could you please talk us through your particular services, what you offer, what information you share and uh, educational resources that you have developed. Absolutely. I never really got to the point of what I do, did I? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I, my company is called When Push Comes to Shove and I was trying to explain and I went off on a tangent earlier that I created this company to empower women and I initially started to try and spread the word because I'm a singer songwriter as well I wrote a song called breathe again um, it was to spread the word of informed consent and therefore bring people to when push comes to shelf so they can learn more so what we're offering is a one-stop service for maternity care essentially now obviously bear in mind there's no insurance for independent midwives right now but we are working on it however we can offer you birth keepers or doulas there we've got about 60 in five different countries so if you can't see one on our website in your area, call us, we'll find you someone. That will mean someone that can give you continuity of care. Now, I must make this very clear. We do not give you any medical support. It is not our responsibility to how you navigate your medical care. We are here as physiological experts in birth and for normal birth. So we can help you make your, um, like give you information to make informed decisions. We can explain what is normal. We can go through antenatal with you. So that will say like, oh, this is what happens during labor. This is what you can expect. If they tell you this, here's the information to make an informed decision. What do you want to do? We're not telling you how to give birth. We may have our preferences, but it's nothing to do with you. Like if you want to give birth in the woods with a mariachi band playing, that's fine. If you want to have a plan C section, that's fine too but as long as you are empowered and the decision is yours and you're not being coerced or bullied by anyone what one person can see as a traumatic birth someone might see as empowering because they chose that route instead of being forced into it you know that makes a difference we can talk to you about free birth so if you don't want to en engage the mainstream maternity service at all you don't have to there's no le legal obligation to do so we we've helped people that have had the social services called on them because they haven't complied as so we've got people that help there we have online antenatal courses that that uh, focus on birth physiology so normal birth and how your body works more people actually when they do that course they realize they don't actually have that many questions afterwards because when you learn about physiology lots of your questions actually get answered and you're like oh okay I see I see so there's no more what ifs yes and then we focus on your human rights so we talk a lot about the NHS constitution women say oh I've had so many people that say I'm not I can't go into hospital because I won't take a PCR test or something like that and then we explain no here's the law here are your rights then we offer training um, so if you want to do what I do we offer a Zoom training, so you know you can do it anywhere in the world. It's a four-day course, and if you work for the NHS, you get a 45% discount because we're giving you like a lifeline because if you're not wanting to comply with a mandate in April, we're gonna help you out. If you're already a midwife, then we give you a 55% discount. It's called the Midwife Lifeboat. We're not training you to be midwives. You're already a midwife. You know, Don't think we're doing anything like that. 
which is bringing you back to physiology and we are teaching you how to be a successful self-employed business owner you know what we do oh three-step rewind that's really important so women that have been traumatized by their previous birth um we uh, offer three-step rewind for that so they can try to heal their trauma that's amazing so uh, in terms of the pandemic itself i would assume more women would go for a home birth preference and we know if the services are limited then no options are left so knowing about the service that you offer uh, when next time uh, women will go to visit their local midwife what are the right words that women can say uh, if they want to go for home birth delivery uh, with your services is there any obstacles on that what if they're seeing a uh, a mainstream midwife yes so this is what i'm doing i'm uh, it's not up for discussion i'm having a home birth um you can tell them that you're engaging a doula or a birth keeper it's entirely your choice you can leave the, the mainstream care if that's what you want to do um no one's forcing you to you know use their services it is an optional service um but i will say like free birth as much as i think that's a wonderful option as in no no one attending you at all please be mindful of the fact of why you're choosing to do it if you're choosing it because you don't think you have an option that's not actually an option that's coercion so if, if they've removed your the, the home birth services in your area and you don't want to go into hospital but you do want to be attended you know you you need to fight this and we can help you do that we can send letters to the hospitals and explaining you know you do have a an obligation to serve this woman um but you know free birth's a great choice if you feel it here and you're like yeah i can do this you know you're not afraid because fear is not conducive to the natural birth you want um but you know we can explain that um also i i really want to make the point of saying you know there might be a few of you viewing oh that's all well and good but you know i can't afford private services that's fine too we have an access fund so if you are on universal credit for example or a, a very low income we know not everyone can afford it so everyone that works for when push comes to shove they donate 10 percent of their fee to an access fund so that we can provide low-income families with a service for free i'm hoping that the access fund is going to get a lot bigger so i can pay um doulas and birth keepers their full fee but at the moment we're trying our best to raise the funds to to keep that going and hopefully it will just i can do it for every single person that asks so yeah and obviously you know a lot of doulas and um birth keepers they they work we will work for free you know depending on what they're saying it's always worth picking up the phone going can you help me or can i make a payment plan you know always ask because I'm, I'm sure most of them are willing to do it because they're in it for the love and the passion not for the money I think the service that you offer is really amazing, especially now when we face this pandemic changes in all different sectors and people are afraid of catching COVID, traveling to hospital, being in a hospital, and then during the delivery, it's of course, it's a huge risk. And I think the way that you work and you help women reduce this risk dramatically. We support the community with long COVID. Quite a lot of women who developed COVID during pregnancy and are left uh, with long COVID condition uh, when they need to deliver a baby. So there is quite a lot of risk and stress involved in delivering in hospitals. So I think uh, we want to create and raise awareness about these services for women who suffer with long COVID, who got COVID during early pregnancy stages. So you're not left alone. There are people around you and like Nikita, there are people around the globe who want to help uh, you to deliver your babies in a safe way. And the passion that you have, I think it, you know, it creates quite a nice uh, environment for, for a safe delivery, for home birth. So thank you for your services that you do. And um, just uh, one more question, how women can uh, get to you and uh, how they can support the work you do and uh, how they can raise funds for your services? 
Um, yeah, certainly. So if you go to when push comes to shove .co.uk. Everything's on our website, um, even our Telegram channel, which is Awakened Pregnancy and Birth. There's thousands of people on there, like like-minded, who are all supporting each other. It's the most amazing little community, actually. Like people ask each other advice, and so supportive. I put videos, nothing but but positive birth videos on there. And then, um, if you would be so kind to support um, our access fund. Um, if you go to our GoFundMe page, which is also on our website, and uh, if you want to book a one-to-one -one with me, like, even before you're pregnant, it's a good idea to do because you've got to get ahead of the game, you know? You've got to like, navigate the system or leave it completely, whatever you want to do. So you can give me a call or an email and we can set up a one-to-one -one consultation. Um, or if you want to do a course, if you want to do what I'm doing, we've got several courses coming up next year. Uh, so reach out and share my song breathe again because it's it's so beautiful the video is like midwives um singing along and uh women that have just had beautiful births in the pool or whatever my births in it as well you'll have to spot which one i am um and then share that because it just shares the message of informed consent and when push comes to shove so thank uh, you we will share all information in the description and a song to our community as well overall i just wanted to summarize this interview is to say that there are options so if you're a future dad and mom who's waiting for a little one there are choices it's all about making informed decision when you're offered any medical intervention so giving birth can be tough where you go through labor naturally or or have c-section or are induced it can be physically and emotionally exhausting and we all know that we went through that so the process may be long and difficult and well a lot of work it's not surprisingly that labor and delivery can make mental toll so after all your life is changing in a sudden and very real way but despite the challenges your experience doesn't have to be a negative one it's not all screaming, sweating, shaking, and cursing. In fact, with the right tools, frame of mind, and people surrounding you, birth can be empowering experience. So I wish you all stay safe and look forward to meeting with your little ones. Thank you for this interview and goodbye. <laughs>